Iran's capital, Tehran, is a megacity home to over 15 million people. Like Los Angeles, Mexico City and Tokyo, Tehran is located at the convergence of multiple fault lines. Geologists believe that earthquakes strike along these fault lines in cycles of approximately 150 years. The last major earthquake to hit Tehran occurred in 1830. A major earthquake is overdue. When it finally does strike, as many as two million people could be directly impacted. Small tremors are not uncommon in Tehran. When they hit, families spend the night in their cars or in public parks, anxiously waiting to see if a bigger earthquake strikes. Students in schools participate in earthquake drills, learning how to take cover, evacuate, and care for the injured. Earthquakes in other parts of Iran have served as a reminder of their deadly power. In 2017, an earthquake near the Iran-Iraq border killed over 600 and displaced thousands. The devastating earthquake that struck Bam in 2003, killing over 25,000 people, led to an outpouring of international assistance, even from the United States. Tehran's residents know that earthquakes pose a danger. But understanding the danger posed by disasters and knowing how to respond to disasters are two different things. In a first-of-its-kind study supported in part by the Bourse and Bazaar Foundation, researcher Peter Noack sought to measure the disaster literacy of Tehran's residents. Noack wanted to understand whether Tehran's residents had a clear idea of what to do when a disaster strikes, whether an earthquake, a flood, or a dust storm, all of which pose a threat to Tehran. So he designed a survey. In December 2020, this survey was administered by telephone to 500 people in Tehran, offering a representative sample of the city's residents. The survey asked a series of questions that measured the respondents' disaster literacy. NOAC's survey was based on a model introduced by Dr. Lisa Brown and her colleagues at Palo Alto University in 2014. Brown, an expert on trauma and resilience, developed the survey model to help better tailor the development of new disaster information materials to the needs of vulnerable groups. Due to the lack of adequate information material, these groups are at a higher risk during a natural disaster. Better information helps protect individuals and communities during catastrophic events. With his survey, Noack aimed to test three hypotheses. Hypothesis one, the previous experience of a natural disaster is associated with a positive effect on the respondent's disaster literacy score. Hypothesis two, the disaster literacy score is positively associated with disaster training received by the participants. Hypothesis three, higher threat perception is associated with a higher disaster literacy score. NOAC's survey also gathered data about the respondents across 20 variables, including age, gender, education level, household size, and average income. Overall, Tehran residents, despite living with the ever-present threat of a major earthquake, exhibited low to average disaster literacy when compared to residents in similar cities worldwide. The highest possible disaster literacy score was five. The average score among respondents in Tehran was just 2.64. The survey findings offer important lessons for policymakers aiming to make Tehran more resilient in the face of disasters like earthquakes. Perhaps surprisingly, personal experience with a natural disaster did not have a positive effect on disaster literacy. Simply having experienced a disaster does not mean you will be better prepared the next time a disaster strikes. Training, on the other hand, does have a positive impact on disaster literacy. On average, respondents who received some sort of disaster training scored three-tenths of a point higher than respondents who did not receive such training but only 48% of respondents reported participating in some kind of natural disaster preparedness training. This means that training programs need to be significantly expanded if communities in Tehran are to become resilient in the face of disasters. Those who feel more threatened by natural disasters are more likely to have a higher disaster literacy score, suggesting that raising awareness about the risks posed by natural disasters is an important first step. What this research makes clear is that much greater investment is needed in disaster preparedness training in Tehran and in Iran more broadly. In August 2019, the Iranian parliament adopted new legislation that should lead to increased preparedness measures and better coordination between relevant government agencies. But budget restraints and bureaucratic issues have prevented the implementation of new programs. Another lesson for policymakers 
is that training must be widely accessible. In NOAC's research, wealthier citizens and those with university educations achieved higher disaster literacy scores. Lower socioeconomic status or levels of education should not be barriers to disaster preparedness training. A major earthquake will hit Tehran one day. It will kill hundreds and injure thousands, causing significant damage to homes, businesses and critical infrastructure. Even though the Iranian government, international organizations and civil society groups have taken important steps, more money needs to be invested in mitigation and preparedness. Buildings and infrastructure should be retrofitted. Resilient strategies should be adopted from other major cities where disasters have taken place. Scientific exchanges with other disaster-prone countries ought to be expanded. Preparedness training programs should be provided at the community, provincial and national levels. Personal responsibility matters too. Tehran's residents should make plans and ensure their families know what to do in the event of a disaster. Even basic preparation can save lives.